I'm sure you've seen interest rates continue to go up. The Fed just announced that the interest rate, the prime, is going up by 75 basis points, which will make prime rate at 7 plus. Does it make sense with current interest rates to buy a business now and financing it with an SBA loan, especially if you put in 10% down? Should you wait or should you buy? Should you wait for interest rates to go down? Or are you going to miss on this opportunity of the perfect cash flow business? So watch me today in this video as I look at potential loans using today's interest rates against cash flow of existing businesses for sale. And we'll make that decision together. Should you buy it or should you wait? Let's get to it. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I am your host, Leo Landaverde, business broker and commercial lender helping you buy or sell a profitable business. If you are a small business owner looking to increase or diversify your wealth by buying an already profitable business, or if you are a very successful executive looking to leave the rat race and go from employee to CEO by buying a profitable business, then you're in the right place. And I'm gonna encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell, and you'll be notified every Thursday when a new video comes out. Okay, so here we go. Um, I may turn this into a more uh, a series of videos because, because with the time we have, we're probably gonna be able to do just one analysis of one particular business for sale that is available as of right now, November, uh, 7th, 2022. I'm taking this just a random uh, business right out of this by sell just to kind of show you the level of analysis that you have to do in order to cope and figure out what interest rates are going to do to a potential deal. So with that in mind, let's go. So what I have here is this is this straight out of a cash flow sheet that I you can download if you want. This is a template. Um, I'm constantly evolving the template and you'll always have the most available template. But what I'm doing right now is I'm taking some information that we know about this deal. So let's talk about, let's see, if we, let's figure this out. So we have a successful automotive service center in Visalia, California. I'm in the Central Valley, California. So it's in my neighborhood within 50 miles. Um, we have some... Um, Furniture and equipment are worth 600,000. The asking price is 1.9 million. Uh, the alleged cash flow is 600,000. I don't know whether this cash flow is, um, we don't know enough yet to know whether this is gonna be seller discretionary earnings or um, EBITDA or EBIT or just simply profit, a net profit, we don't know. But what this is, is uh, successful a uh, very profitable, specialized automotive repair center. Historically, repair centers are very, very successful. They're very stable. There's a recession proof. Uh, this business, uh, the, the clients, customers include government, major dealers, agricultural and retail. Uh, so we know that I have experience with this type of um, remote repairs can be very steady. Uh, this is a, sort of a kind of in the middle, it's a good size. I've seen them bigger, I've seen them smaller, but this is kind of a middle of the of, of the of range. Um, what it tells us that they're asking 1.9 million for the business itself. Um, you can download more information, which I have, which I'm gonna show you and some more, more details on the business. So it doesn't really give you very much without pulling in your information um, in, into it so we can get more. One thing I should say that is if you are a buyer looking for a business to buy, and if if you don't know any better and you fill out this contact form and you put your name, full name, your phone number, your email address and your zip code and all of this information and you send it over to this broker, in order for you to get more information, you're gonna to have to sign an NDA and a bunch of other uh, fine print that is gonna make you the procuring costs of the sale, meaning that if you wanted to work with a, a, another business broker like me to represent you, it will be up to the business broker to be able to share in their commission uh, with, with me. And if they're not, well, then you would have to pay the, the representation out of pocket, which, you know, uh, I would suggest don't do that. And then 
contact somebody like me and, and, and see if we can actually work something out with the broker. But with that said, so this is some more information about the, the deal itself. Um, an automotive, specialized automotive repair center, property, spa, staple of the Tulare County for generations. So it's, I like that. It's been around for a long time, so that's good. Um, the listing price of the business, including real estate, any enterprise value and assets estimated at 5 million. Owners would be willing to carry a portion of the purchase price um, and, or, and or lease back the facility. So you don't have to buy the real estate, but it's there if you want it. SBA financing is available in a, hands, in a handsome option given to given the current rates and payback terms. No, because they are aware of what rising interest rates are doing and trying to sweeten the deal for you. One thing I should say is that whenever there is real estate involved, the amortization schedule on an SBA, that would be probably a 504 loan, it's 25 year term, instead of the 10 traditional amortization, 10 year repay on a 7A loan versus 25 year repay on a 504 loan for commercial real estate. So we're starting to learn a little more. Uh, the EBITDA in 2020 was 197, just shy of 200,000. In 2017 was 230, in 2018 is 260. So if I'm looking at this in 2022, I want to know well, what happened to 2021 and 2022 year today. Now there's there's different calculations, and we're going to get into valuations in a little bit. But uh, seller discretionary earnings is a measure of a valuation of a company on multiple uh, on a multiple businesses sell for multiples of selling discretionary earnings or multiples of EBITDA or multiples of revenue. The alleged SDE on this deal is 598,000, <clears throat> just shy of 600,000. That's probably what they listed here under 600,000 is the SDE. So the seller discretionary earnings is the net income of the business plus addbacks uh, from or expenses or one-time expenses that the owner is riding through as, as, a, as a write-off into the business, which could include their compensation, their, their, their salary. So if you have a profit and loss in your owner's compensation, it's in the profit and loss. And say you pay, say yourself, you pay yourself 100,000, well, that would be reducing the EBITDA to 197. So without, it would be 297. And then you start adding other things back. All of this would be, um, filtered through and evaluated the, uh, thoroughly during due diligence. But right now we're just looking from the, uh, we're from the outside looking in. We know that the seller discretionary earnings were 50, 559 in 2017 and 653. So, so far so good. Uh, so what we do is we take some of this information and we put it here. And these are the deal points as listed by the business broker. At this point, we're not adjusting anything. We're just taking the information that is given to us we just gonna add it here. So what we're doing is they're asking for one and a half, one point nine million. We put in here the seller discretionary earnings is not six hundred thousand; it's five ninety eight. As with this, just with these two numbers, we know that the multiple of seller discretionary earnings is three point seventeen. Now, is that good or bad? We're gonna find out soon enough. The EBITDA. It's 197, and that came from here. 197, 139. I'm taking the most recent year disclosed, and I'm going to put it here. And if you take the asking price and you divide it into the EBITDA, as we did here, tells you that the multiple valuation of EBITDA is 964, almost 10 times EBITDA. Okay. So... That's what it is. So based on this, if you were to just go through with this and you agree to that this was the value that you the, the, the asking price is what you wanted to pay, you wanted to pay the asking price without any negotiations, well, that's what that's what it would be like. So to be a finance by a seller uh, by a SBA loan, minimum is 10% down payment. So that is your 190000 which is 10% right here. So you take your asking price on 10% is 190,000. Assuming that there will be some seller carry, uh, 190,000, uh, that would be 10%. And then the SBA loan for 1.5 million for the remainder 
of the uh, to complete the 100% on the transaction. Now, if we were just to play these numbers out, uh, so you're looking at a, a 10 year seller carry. So if this is the if the SBA is always going to have the amortization of the seller carry match their amortization. So in the case the SBA 7A loan goes up to 10 years. Uh, right now we're going with an assumption of 9.25 interest rate on a 10 year amortization. Your annual payments are going to be 233,531. Your seller carry is going to be 26,473. Your total debt service is the sum of these two, it's 260,000. Okay. So even with those two numbers, uh, with this information right here, we now know that the debt service coverage ratio is going to be 0.76. Now, minimum debt service coverage ratio acceptable by an SBA lender is going to be no less than 1.25. So in this case, we failed. This set up this proposal here of care of, of uh, 10 1080 and a 1.5 million dollar loan will not be enough to cover the debt which means that it will not be financeable by an SBA lender nobody will finance it so this is a this will be a loop you know unless unless the buyer is paying all cash which I doubt this is non financeable by an SBA lender now I, I don't know how they say it's financeable but that's that's kind of the numbers tell me. If this video has resonated with you, please like and comment on this video. Your comments is the currency of the YouTube algorithm. The more you comment on my video, the more the YouTube algorithm will serve it up to other people just like yourself looking for the same content. Also, if you're looking to buy a business and need help, I love to help you. Just put a comment or drop me an email. My email address is down below in the description of this video so we can connect so I can help you on your journey of buying a business. If you look at the annual cash flow post debt service, you take the 197,000 minus 233,000, this is what gives us less than one, which means we're underwater by $63,000. Cash on cash return is negative 33 and the cap rate is 31. Well, forget about the cap rate, we're not making cash. We're not we're not, we're not making money. Okay? that's the reality what you're dealing with but remember beauty is in the eye of the beholder right the asking price doesn't have to be the offer price so i worked some numbers i'm going to tell you how i got here but i needed to do a little due diligence uh, as business brokers we have access to comparable sales we have software that allows us to find comparable sales on a specific business we can go as narrow as uh, you know businesses in this state in this industry vertical, this NAICS code, uh, between one and $5 million, all the sales that have taken place in the last five years, we can get information. So what I did is I, I found some information specifically on, let me show you here. Let's see here. Okay, sorry, I had a multiple of them open. So here we have comparable sales. There was not a lot of them for sale between 2018 and 2022. I found three businesses in California with this NAICS code right here. Uh, here's what I wanted to pay attention to, the valuations. Okay, this is the revenue. This is the seller discretionary earnings. This is actual data. This is how businesses were sold. This is the EBITDA. So what that means is that for this particular business that sold for this particular auto repair shop that sold for one million eleven thousand two hundred, the valuation came out to be 0 0.7 times 0 0.72 times revenue, 2.82 times just shy of three times seller discretionary earnings, and 3.57. Multiples of EBITDA. So we did the same for each one of the two. And what we have here is an average. Let's say we were to go with the average of 0.62 times revenue, 2.69 selling discretionary earning multiple, and just shy of six on the EBITDA multiple. So this is what you see here on this side. You're seeing a 0.62 times revenue. 
2.69 multiple of seller discretionary earnings and 5.99 multiple of EBITDA. Remember what I told you that 9.6 power seem a little high? Well, that's what you have. This business is overpriced based on comparable sales. It's overvalued. So we're gonna potential offer here. We're just gonna we're playing with some numbers. Uh, this is a really a mock-up exercise, so, so you guys learn how to, this is done. So I'm going to go with EBITDA. Now, I really don't like to, if I don't know enough, I would rather go be conservative and go with the smaller number. In this case, it's EBITDA. So EBITDA is 197. So what I've done here is taking the EBITDA as it's given to me, and I'm going to put it right here. So let's say we were to readily accept the EBITDA that is given to us by the listing agent. And we were to say, you know what? We're gonna have to, since we cannot afford a loan, we cannot afford an SBA loan because there is not enough cash flow. we're gonna have to be a little more realistic. What if instead of nine times or 9.64 times multiple, we were to offer half of that? So what would happen is you now you have a potential offer at 985. Notice the big difference. This may be even offensive to the seller because really it's it's hard for a typical seller to come to grip with the actual value of their business. But let's say that that is the case, that we can only afford to offer something that can be financeable by a lender. So if it is not financeable by a lender, there's no deal. So in this particular case, your down payment would go from 190 to 98. There may or may not be a need for a seller carry, and we're going for a 90% uh, SBA loan. In this case, it would be 985 times 90, so we're looking at a loan for 887. Okay? So, uh, oh, I forgot to tell you. So, let's go back here. This is the debt service at 9.25. You notice here, we have a couple of other scenarios here. No matter what I do, you're going to realize that even if, if the interest rate was 8.25, the lesson I want you to learn is it doesn't really matter what the interest rate is, it's what the cash flow is. So even if the cash flow, we would have, even if the rate would have been at 8.25, what is it, 223, 718? Our debt service coverage ratio is still less than 1.25. What if it would have been a 7.25 interest rate, 214, 139, we barely go over 0.82. What if it would have been 6.25, 204, 799, 0.85. So the moral of the story is it doesn't really matter what the interest rate is. If there is not enough cash flow on the deal, you're not going to be able to get a finance. So that's what I wanted to illustrate on this scenario. Okay, so back to this. There is an amortization table that we use. Let's say we would go with the original 5.99 in this case. So if we were to go with 5.99, which is matches here, we would have to offer... 1,180,000, which is far cry from the 1.9. So we're asking for a discount. Of $719,000. That's a pretty substantial discount. Now, will the seller go for it? Probably not. But you would not want to get into a situation that you are biting more than you can chew. But this is what the comps support a 6% average. Remember what I show you here? A 6% average EBITDA multiple. So in, if that is the case, we will be financing 1,062. That's even at 90% LTV instead of 1.5. So if you notice here the comment, then the notes here is 1,062,776 as 9.25 interest rate over 10 year repay. Our debt service without a Seller financing is 136,000. Now we got something. You take the $197,000 EBITDA and you divide it into the proposed new debt service that is more reasonable 
Now you have a debt service coverage ratio that is way above the 1.25 minimum. There are some banks that may or may, or may not have an appetite for this type of uh, industry because every SBA lender has some industries they don't like to deal with. But I'm assuming that this, if I was to go to an SBA lender that they actually want this type of uh, auto mechanic shop or auto service shop and their debt service coverage ratio minimum would be 1.5. In that case, now we have cash flow left over of $60,842, cash on cash return of 52%, which is basically you're making half of what your down payment is, and then your cap rate is 50 times, which is obscene, right? So it's great. Um, that's how you kind of, and this is the scenario. This is the difference between the two scenarios. Notice the difference in cash flow. You go from negative cash flow from negative 34 to 60 is a $95,000 swing. And this is where you need, this is why I encourage you to work with somebody who knows, work with a business broker who knows, because this is the intelligence gathering portion is what makes the difference. Now we haven't even began to do due diligence. But this is at the letter of intent level, what makes sense to offer on a business like this. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Please let me know in the comment section and I'm gonna do more videos like this in the next few weeks. For a little bit of time, I'm giving away my cash flow calculator, the very simple tool that I use in today's video to help analyze the post cash flow with the debt of the different loans that we looked at. It's really simple to use. All you have to do is click on the link below and you'll be taken to a page where you can download it and it'll be yours to keep. Give me some feedback. Let me know how you like it. Thank you very much.